Hello, my lovely Math 7 children. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on Lesson 3-2, which is on addition, and more specifically, the addition rules. So we have a couple of ways uh, to help you add two integers. So let's go ahead and get started. For the number line is going to be the first way we talk about. Um, the first number, so go ahead and do this with me. The first number is going to be where you start. So for instance, in this first example, the number four, um, that's gonna be where I start. So go ahead and put that dot on number on the number four in the number line. Then the next number that you have is where um, how many spaces you're going to move. So second number, um, it's gonna be our move. So I'm moving that many spaces. So what this means right here, the negative six is telling us that we're gonna go negative. So we're gonna go left and we're gonna move uh, six spaces. So I'm gonna start with my number four and I'm gonna go six spaces to the left because it is negative. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So where that is right there is um, going to be our final answer wherever you end up. So therefore, 4 plus a negative 6 gives us a final answer of negative 2, okay, because that's where we ended up. All right, using that same idea, we're going to do this next example. So number 2 says negative 1. Now, if that is stressing you out to see the dot and the arrow going to the left, um, you can erase it, or better yet, you can use the bottom. So you can start down here at like a negative 1. And then again, that second number tells us uh, which direction to move and how many spaces. So it's saying to the left because it's negative. So the right's always positive and the left is always negative. And it's telling us to move four spaces to the left. So when I do that, I'm gonna go one, two, three, and four. And so where I end up right there is negative five. All right, go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to try this example down here of two, negative two plus seven. Go ahead and pause. All righty, so what this tells us is to start at uh, negative two, and then I'm gonna go seven spaces positive, or seven spaces to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which means our final answer here is a positive five. Alrighty, let's go on to the next example. So that first one was number line. Now we're gonna do the scoreboard. So the scoreboard um, is very much like a normal scoreboard in any sort of sports game, um, in that there are two teams. In this case, every single time, the two teams are the positives and the negatives. So for the scoreboard, you are gonna ask yourself two questions. So the first question, once you've put the scores on each team, the first one is going to be who won? And then the second question is going to be by how many? So what that means is when I put my score down here, so notice on question number four, it says a negative four, which means that the negatives got four points. And then a positive seven, which means the positive team got seven points. So then once you've put all the scores into the scoreboard, you're going to ask yourself those two questions. So the first one is who won. So if the score was seven to four, we know that the positives won. And then how many did they win by? So to figure out how many they won by, if one team got seven, the other team got four, you're just going to subtract the two scores. So our final answer is the positives won by three points, which means our final answer is a positive three. Okay, looking again at maybe a more challenging um, example, I have negative 12, so I'm going to put 12 points on the negative side. And then I have a positive 16, so therefore 16 is going to go over here. And then the negative scored again, they scored 9 more points. So if this is the case, um, go ahead and add up your total scores. So the positives, they just got 16 points, but the negatives, they actually got a total of, when I add those together, I get 21 points. So then therefore, the positive team got 16 and the negative team got 21. So the first question is who won the game? Hopefully we're circling the negatives. And how many did they win by? Well, in order to figure that out, you're gonna find the difference or you're gonna subtract them. So 21 minus 16 tells us that they won by five points. So our final answer here is negative five because the negatives won. Notice on number four, because the positives won, we didn't put a plus sign. You just kept it as three. All right. Go ahead and pause this video, and I want you to try questions six and seven. All right, go ahead and pause. 
Alrighty, let's take a look. Uh, for this first one, number six, the positives got zero points. And then the negatives had a total of 29 points. So the first question, who won the game? The negatives. And they won by 29 points. So our final answer here is negative 29. Uh, next one, the negatives got nine. The positives got 14. And then the negatives got three. So we're going to go ahead and total this one up. So therefore, our final score is 14 to 12. And the positives won. And the positives won by two points because they beat them by two more. So our final answer here is two. All right. So you've seen two different ones. Um, the number line, yes, you do have to have a number line. Um, and for the scoreboard, there um, are not going to be already made scoreboards for you with the positives and the negatives team. So if you choose to use the scoreboard method, you can always just run a quick like positives and negatives, or you could have a scoreboard that looks like this with just with a plus sign and a minus sign. It's totally up to you. Um, but both of those, you kind of have to have um, props, if you will. But this final one um, is actually going to be the one that I discuss most in class. So what um, SAC DSL is what that means. Uh, the SAC stands for the same sign. Go ahead and write this with me. So if it's the same sign. So for instance, if they're both negative or if they're both positives, um, we are going to add. So add them together. And then the K stands for keep the sign. So I'm going to go ahead also and do uh, DSL just to, so that you have the words off to the side. Um, and then we'll practice three times, and then you'll practice on your own three times. So this one, um, instead of same sign, the D, um, I'm just going to go ahead and draw like a little line here, the little design. Um, that way you know it's two different things. So the first one, same sign, add and keep. The D down below stands for different sign. And with when you have a different sign, so for instance, if one number is positive and one number is negative, um, you are going to subtract. And then the L stands for keeping the larger. So again, I'll talk about what all of these mean, um, but I just wanted you to see the words and write them down. That way the example makes a little bit more sense to you. Okay, so for this first one, notice that this one is a negative and this one is a negative. So notice that both signs of these numbers are negative. So therefore, since they're the same sign, this instance we are going to use SAC. So go ahead and write that off to the side, please. So with SAC, that means same sign, so I'm going to add them. So 9 plus 4. And when I add 9 plus 4, I get 13. And then the K stands for to keep the sign. So the original sign up above, since they're both negative, notice that I've just um, indicated that, our final answer is going to be negative. Which makes sense, because if both of those were positive, it'd just be 9 plus 4, and 9 plus 4 is 13, and I just keep it positive. So whenever you see some negatives, go ahead and just shove that negative onto that number. All right, the next one. This one is a negative sign, and this one is a positive sign. So since they're different signs, here we're going to use DSL. So with DSL, D stands for different. We've already indicated that. S stands for subtract. So whenever you subtract, you always take the bigger number minus the smaller number. So it's almost like you disregard these negatives and just subtract the two numbers. So I'm going to take 21 minus 9. I used 21 first uh, because 21 is much bigger than 9. So when I subtract those two things out, I get um, 12 is what's left over. So with the number 12, um, I'm going to decide if or determine if it's positive or negative, depending on the larger number. So again, we've already indicated that 21 is a larger number. So since 21 is a larger number and 21 is negative, our final answer here is negative. Final answer, negative 12. Okay, then we're going to do one more example over here. I see a negative, and whenever it's addition, uh, you can work it in any order that you want, but I'm going to go ahead and work it from the left to the right for right now. So negative 6 and a negative 11. Notice that I said negative for both of them. So because they're both negative, I'm doing SAC. So the A in SAC stands for add. So when I add 6 plus 11, I get 17. And then the K stands for to keep the sign. So the sign originally was negative. I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the 17. And notice that I haven't done anything yet with this positive 35. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring that down. So then I'm going to essentially start over the problem. So I have a negative 17 and a positive 35. So since they're different signs, I know I'm going to use DSL. So I've already indicated the D. Um, S stands for to subtract. So I'm going to subtract, always take the bigger number first, so 35 is bigger than 17. 
Go ahead and subtract those two numbers. When I do that, I end up with 18. So I have the number 18, now I just need to determine if it's positive or negative. So in DSL, the L stands for the larger number, and the larger number in this case is 35, and 35 is positive, making 18 a positive number. All right, go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to work questions 11, 12, and 13, and then push play when you have completed them. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and do these just a little bit quicker. So this first one is a DSL. Since they're different sides, subtract 40 minus 23 gives us 17. And then to determine whether it's positive or negative, you look back up at the original. 40 is our bigger number and 40 is positive. Therefore, it is a positive 17. Okay, this next one, again, it is DSL. So DSL, different signs, I'm going to subtract them. So when I take 12 minus 12, I just get a big fat goose egg. Now, zero is neither positive nor negative. It's just its own entity. So go ahead and just box in that number zero. It doesn't need to be positive or negative. And then the last one, again, we're going to work it from the left to the right. So negative six, positive seven does, in fact, give us DSL. When I subtract out six or seven minus six, remember I always take the big number first, I get the number one. And then one is going to stay positive because seven was bigger and seven is positive. Then I have not done anything with uh, this plus a negative nine. So let's bring that down plus a negative nine. So in this case here, I see that I have a positive one and a negative nine. Again, I'm going to use DSL. Subtract the two things. Nine minus one gives us eight. Then I'm going to determine whether it's positive or negative. So in order to do that, I look at my larger number. Nine was larger and nine is negative. Therefore, our final answer here is negative eight. How'd you do? Hopefully you did really well. Um, off to the side near the U-try, I want you to tell me of those three problems, how many you got correct the first time. So off to the side, right under the word U-try, please put n the number 0, 1, 2, or 3, depending on how many you got originally. Also, make sure that any of these U-tries that you got incorrectly, that you're going back and fixing to make sure that your notes are accurate. All right, good luck on your problems.